So, um, the human voice conveys a wealth of information about people's feelings, mental states, or emotions. So just listening to the way someone speaks, you'll be able to detect when that person is singing, tired, angry, proud, or ironical. But of course, all those cues are of different kinds. Some of them merely reveal the way in which the person has decided to talk, or very simple physical states. But other cues um, reveal properly mental states. So for example, basic emotions, social emotions, or second order mental states. And among those cues, some of them are going to need more or less mind reading skills to be processed. For instance, we know from infant research that basic emotions are processed automatically without resorting to complex theory of mind. By contrast, um, social emotions, so for example, identifying guilt or shame or embarrassment, require that you're able to take someone else's perspective onto what you've done. And um, yet more complex skills, like identifying irony, um, require that you're able to manipulate two orders of theory of mind. So that is the ability to represent thoughts about someone else's thoughts. Um, so this variety of uh, vocal cues means that prosody is a very good test case for the theory of mind account of autism, which would predict increased impairments as the level of mentalizing also increases. And in fact, what we know already is that um, people on the autism spectrum struggle to read the mind in the voice, and that um, they also struggle to speak in a manner that we would consider typical. However, what hasn't been done yet is to um, systematically, sorry, is to systematically uh, vary the level of mentalizing in one study. Um, and so, in fact, so far, all those various cues here have been sort of mixed up. And it's difficult to know whether the group differences that have been identified so far are due to a very narrow um, impairment in uh, theory of mind, or whether it's due to a more general uh, problem with dealing with social cues. So what we did is that we presented um, people with autism with stories. So, for example, Ben hears a big noise from his neighbor's house and says, and then they heard a, a vocal stimulus, like this one. <laughs> What's that noise? And they had to choose between two options. One was Ben is scared, and the other one was Ben is angry. Um, and in this study, we included all those kinds of various cues, and we checked whether, which category would be specifically impaired in autism. Um, in order to avoid content effect, each background story was paired with the two options. So that means that in our example, we also had another list for other participants who would hear this stimulus. What is that noise? So here, the answer is angry. Right, so we tested um, high-functioning teenagers with autism matched on chronological age, BPVS score, which is a measure of uh, vocabulary level, so verbal IQ, and on basic auditory skills, like the ability to discriminate pitch, intensity, and duration. And so we looked at rates of correct answers in each of the categories. Um, and what we saw is that in accordance with the categories I've shown you, there was indeed a gradual decrease of performance as the complexity of mentalizing increased. However, contrary to what we predicted, there was no main effect of the group. And there was no um, interaction between the group and the category. So that means that even in very complex theory of mind conditions, um, our participants were performing like the controls. Even more surprisingly, they were doing so at similar speeds as the controls. So again, there was no main effect of the group. So from there, it would be tempting to conclude that our participants were genuinely reading the mind in the voice and that they had no theory of mind difficulties. But the other option is that they were arriving at this result using a different route. In other words, they might have been using compensatory strategies. And um, the idea of compensatory strategies 
can be tested in various ways. First, um, compensatory strategies are thought to be rooted in high verbal skills. So the idea is that it's because you are very verbally able that you can, you know, complexly, uh, explicitly reason about the other person's mental state. So that means that if this is the case, then performance should correlate with our measure of verbal intelligence. The higher you score in your verbal intelligence, the better you'll be at compensating your mind reading um, uh, impairment. The second prediction is that compensatory strategies will be by nature less efficient than the actual process that you're supposed to use. So it means that we should find slower reaction times in conditions requiring theory of mind. And the last prediction is that it should be possible to disrupt the compensatory mechanism. Here the idea is that because you're reasoning in a complex way, in an explicit way, you're using lots of cognitive resources. So if you load the system with another task, then you won't have enough cognitive resources anymore to use your compensatory mechanism. So if you make the task extra demanding, that should affect performances. So in experiment two, that's what we did. We asked participants to recognize the same vocal cues as previously, whilst being engaged in a very difficult dual task. And this task was to decide how many times you heard the speaker pronounce the letter T. It's very difficult, so you have to do two things at the same time. Um, both groups performed equally well on the uh, interfering task. And here are the results for the emotion task. Much to our surprise, the interfering task had absolutely no effect on performances in both groups. So we still had the same pattern of performances. What we did see, however, is that reaction times um, increased in the autism group only. But as you can see, although there's a main effect of the group, there's no interactions. It means that the slowdown is general. It's not specific to mentalistic conditions. So as you can see here, this uh, condition, which is detecting whether the person is singing, for example, slows down people with autism just as much as mentalized, mentalistic conditions like recognizing irony in the voice. So that means that, um, and also, sorry, yes, there was no correlation of either reaction times or accuracy with verbal IQ. So that was the other prediction we had made. So it means that um, our group of ASD participants were not specifically impaired in conditions requiring higher order mind reading skills, and they didn't appear to be resorting to a compensatory strategy. If they had resorted to a compensatory strategy, we would have seen a bigger effect on the conditions that require theory of mind than on the conditions that don't require theory of mind, like for example saying that someone is singing. But the overall slowdown in reaction times does indicate that people with autism struggle to use vocal cues in very challenging situations. Um, and that is independently, again, of underlying mind reading requirements. So, and by the way, this is closer to maybe what we have to do in real life. We have to process several things at the same time. And this might explain why, in naturalistic conditions, they have problems uh, perceiving prosodic cues. So where do we go from those results? Where well, there's two questions that need to be raised. The first question is, are those results isolated? And it's an important question because if those results are isolated, then we should question the data and not speculate too much about the conclusions. Um, but if they aren't isolated, then we need to come up with an alternative explanation. 